And welcome once again to our daily devotional. This is Reverend Phil Anderson, pastor of Oakland United Methodist Church in Kansas Avenue, United Methodist Church here in the capital city of Topeka, Kansas. So very glad to have you with us today as we once again are going to look at God's word here, a scripture passage today from the Gospel of John. And we'll just have a good time visiting and we hope you can find a spot where you can just kick back and relax. Like I've said many times, grab a cup of coffee, some tea, uh, maybe some water, whatever you want to drink, but just sit back and, and enjoy. You know, we sometimes, I think, make things a little more difficult. I think God wants us to enjoy his presence. I think he wants us to enjoy his word. And, you know, when we're in God's word, we're in God's presence. So uh, this is the beauty of the of the scriptures. Every time we read them, we get something new out of them. And as I've said before, these are not intended as in-depth in Bible studies. They're intended only as our chance to get together, to visit, and to hopefully encourage one another through our mutual love for Jesus. So with that being said, let us have a word of prayer as we start our session today, shall we? Father in heaven, again, I thank you for people who are listening today. I, I ask those uh, who aren't listening, I pray your blessing upon both those who are listening, Lord, those who cannot join us today. I, I just ask, Lord, that you would be ever present to those that we know in our church families, uh, Oakland United Methodist Church, Kansas Avenue United Methodist Church here in particular, those that I serve and I dearly love them, Lord. I, I miss seeing them during this time of coronavirus. And Lord, we just again ask for you to show us your presence uh, in, in, in tangible ways, Lord. Just help us to really know that you are with us and, 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 and help us not to have any doubt, Lord, that you love us, that you haven't forgotten us. I know times are difficult for a lot of people, Lord. Show those folks that are struggling that you love them, that you care for them, that you haven't left them. Help them to come closer to you because, Lord, we know that if we draw near to you, you will draw near to us. So, Lord, that's my prayer today, that we will, through this time, through these next 10 minutes, we will draw close to you because we know, Lord, the promise is that if we do that, you are going to draw close to us. Lord, we thank you for loving us, for being with us, and for never leaving us or forsaking us. And we pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, again, this is Reverend Phil Anderson with you today. I'm so very, very, very glad that you're here. Just thrilled that we can have these times together. And today we're going to look again at the 14th chapter of the Gospel of John in just two verses, verses 25 and 26. Jesus Christ is speaking to us. And, you know, a lot of our discussions of late has revolved around the Holy Spirit. And so today will be no different. We're going to talk about the working of the Holy Spirit. And so let's, let's, let's look at it right here, shall we? All this I have spoken while still with you, Jesus says here. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. And then listen to these verses. This, 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 I want to add one more verse. Sometimes I think we're cutting these off too soon. There's only two verses on here. I'm going to add this next verse. I just think it's right on for what we're dealing with. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You know, when the coronavirus came, and I'm, and I'm glad we don't talk about the coronavirus every day on here. If you're looking for an update on the coronavirus, you're not going to get it here. We've talked about it, obviously, because there's things that we have to deal with as a church family and as individuals, and, and we understand that, but we're not going to rehash everything. I want to say this, though. When, when all this happened, we did not know where it was going to end. In fact, now, two and a half months later, three months later now almost, we still don't know where it's all going to end. But I want to say this. My encouragement all along has been when we have tried to make the decisions that we believe God had given us to make with regard to shutting down the church and, and doing things that just seemed like they were a little bit extreme. As we found out, they really were not extreme at all. But I always tried to reassure everybody, and I, I still do this today. We did not act out of fear, and we did not act out of a sense of panic. We did what we believe God was telling us to do in terms of trying to protect each other, to be healthy, and to be safe. That's it. But there's never been any fear. God's in control. Why would we fear? And we have to sometimes remind ourselves how, how God is always with us and how he loves us. He is not going anywhere. He is 
as much with us today with us today as he was a year ago before he even knew anything about the coronavirus and the pandemic that we've been facing now. So my point is, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We go through changes, perhaps. We may go through difficulties. We go through challenges. That's part of life. But don't for a second, please, friends, don't doubt that God has changed all of a sudden. He hasn't changed. He's still the same. You know, there's a song back in the 70s called Still the One. And, and, you know, God is still the one. Jesus is still the one. He's still the one who loves us. He's still the one who's with us. He's still the one who's true through and through. And we can count on him and totally be 100% safe when we put ourselves in his hands that's how jesus is he ain't gonna leave us and he ain't gonna forget us he's not gonna forsake us if you feel a bit lonely if you feel a bit frustrated if you feel a little bit down just in general Remember, people love you, and you've got church friends to reach out to. You can call me. You can call other members of the church family. But remember, people love you. But more importantly, you can turn to God's Word. And you can be reassured throughout the Scriptures that God loves you. And He is with you. Now, this today is fantastic because again we've been speaking about the holy spirit and all the different things the holy spirit does i've said before i believe the holy spirit gives us insights i believe he gives us wisdom i believe he gives us revelations i believe he gives us ideas and concepts and thoughts that really there's no other human explanation where do these come from i believe they came from the holy spirit the spirit of god who's active in our lives but you see, the Holy Spirit is also a comforter. He comforts us. Don't you think it's important that every human being has a comforter? Some of those folks that act so big and bad, you know, they probably need a comforter too. But he's also the counselor. Many of us need a counselor. We need someone we can confide in, someone who can point us in the right way, the right direction. Jesus Christ is our savior and when he went to be with his father in heaven after he raised him raised from the dead in the uh, following his crucifixion jesus said he was going to send the comforter he's going to send the holy spirit to be with us and there he is the counselor the comforter the holy spirit he's here he is alive he's with us he is in us by the power of the living God, we have the Holy Spirit. And as I said in this sermon, I believe the other day for Pentecost Sunday, we, we oftentimes focus, I think, more on the Father and the Son and not so much on the Holy Spirit in terms of being aware of our triune God and his characteristics, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. But friends, I'm telling you, we need to really tap into the Holy Spirit and use the power and all of the other gifts he gives us. Again, he's the comforter. He's the counselor. He's our provider for wisdom and for knowledge and for insights and for revelations. He gives us things. He'll tell us things if we're but listening to him. I believe this. You have to experience it. You have to invite Christ into your heart first. But once you have Christ, you're going to have access to the Holy Spirit. And my goodness, what a gift the Holy Spirit is. And then the Holy Spirit gives us more gifts. And it's just a wonderful thing. We have to enter in that door to find Christ. And then we get so many blessings and so many benefits. Well, I could keep talking. Our time is about up. Let's pray, shall we, before we go. Father in heaven, again, I thank you for this time we have together. We just scratched the surface. I would invite our friends here listening to get into the word, to be comforted, to be encouraged by the word of God. It's ever present, it's always living, always giving us what we need to hear. I ask this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, thanks again for joining us. This is Reverend Phil Anderson, pastor of Oakland United Methodist Church in Kansas Avenue, United Methodist Church in Topeka, inviting you to join us again tomorrow at kaumc.church. Until then, may God richly bless you is my prayer.